We pray because God gave us the gift of the wheel. And for as long as we know and learn the dynamics of exercising that wheel, verbalizing, communicating our desire, our helplessness, our challenges, our frustrations, God is more than willing. He has bound himself with a covenant that for every believer who uses the gift of that wheel to call upon him, that he will coordinate the resources of heaven to the advantage of that believer. Shout, I will pray. One more time, say, I will pray. What you just said is, I'm ready to be victorious. What you just said is, I'm ready to walk in partnership with God. I am tired of walking alone. Life is not that hard. It is hard when you are walking alone. But when you have a trusted ally, proven the creator of the ends of the earth, you are able to walk as frail as you are. You will look indomitable because of the one who stands behind you. The Bible says he stands behind you as a mighty, terrible one. There are many dimensions to prayer if you are to be thoroughly trained and um, by God's grace we have touched on a few areas and will yet touch on a few others but I have a central point of emphasis tonight however I will still touch on various areas just to bring us uh, to the same page my, my emphasis tonight is to show you how prayers are answered that, that is the part I think many believers do not understand We'll still touch on a few things, but the central point of my discussion tonight is to show you the dynamics of answered prayer. Hallelujah. So the idea of prayer is at the fabric of every practice of spirituality world over, whether it is Christianity as we know, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, it doesn't matter what faith practice, one area of agreement as seen by every faith practice is that prayer is a very essential component to defining spirituality it is difficult to define spirituality using any reference uh, and then isolating the subject of prayer are we together so prayer is a very cardinal index for measuring spirituality not just within the Christian faith, but across every faith practice whatsoever. The one thing that is common to any and almost all religions is that they subject themselves to some kind of prayer. Very quickly, what is prayer? What is the Bible's idea of prayer? Believers pray, Africans pray, many of us pray. I presume all of us pray, but if we are to be honest, we'll see that the results that we get from prayer vary according to the level of knowledge that is invested in that prayer. And so God wants to bring us to a greater place of mastery. But to start tonight, we need to understand the whole idea. What is prayer? What does the Bible mean when it talks about prayer? Write this down, please. In simple terms, prayer is communication with God. A platform that allows for communication with God quite honestly broadly speaking it's it allows for the communication with or interaction with the realm of the spirit and any kind of spirit really but then because we are believers we are limiting our study to the God of the Bible God Almighty prayer in simple terms is a platform that allows the believer to communicate with God it is also defined as a platform that allows us to communicate our thoughts our needs our desires to God a platform that allows the believer to communicate his or her thoughts needs and desires are we following so far so you see that essentially prayer is about communication it allows us to communicate with God, communicating our thoughts, our needs, and our desires. Prayer is also extended to mean fellowship with God, a platform that allows for fellowship with God. So it's not just about needs and desires. Prayer is also defined as a platform that allows us to fellowship with God. In addition to communicating our thoughts and needs and our desires, it's a platform that allows us to fellowship with God. Finally, 
prayer is also a platform that allows us to hear and receive from God to hear and receive from God the Bible says God is spirit the Bible says God is almighty and you would think because he's spirit and almighty mere men cannot hear him but the Bible tells us that men can hear God men can communicate with God men can receive from God from Genesis to Revelations we see men communicating with God getting accurate responses from him and responding to that which they heard or received from him so prayer allows us not just to communicate with God but it also allows him to communicate back to us hallelujah if you're learning say amen. amen every time you think prayer think communication whether communicating needs communicating thoughts communicating worship fellowship and also a platform that allows you to receive back from God why pray this is the first thing I want to address why pray why is the subject of prayer very important I don't think there has been any time and I, I most likely maybe I'm wrong but um, I stand to be corrected I do not know any other time in human history where there has been a global widespread emphasis on the need or the necessity for prayer especially within the continent of Africa we have from church to church book to book seminar to seminar conference to conference preachers in their variety emphasizing the same subject the need for prayer the need for diligent prayer people have written books people have written voluminous dissertations on this subject of prayer but i like to answer the question why pray why do we need to pray it's important because most believers pray without knowing the need in 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 in, in all honesty I think most believers just found themselves in this drive to pray and in a bit to emulate those they admire they got into this subject of prayer it was not willingly so it was not with determination and understanding they just admired certain people maybe men of God maybe business people maybe elders in the faith and since the people credited their transformation to prayer many people just follow suit but you need a deeper conviction than that if your prayer life is going to be rich. So let's answer the question, why pray? What is the foundational um, revelation behind this call to prayer? Is it just to feel spiritual? Is it just to have power? Is it to ease the guilt of laziness spiritually? Why pray? I will tell you and I want you to please listen. The foundation... Or the foundational revelation that necessitates this whole subject of prayer is embedded in something God put within man I want you to listen please listen carefully Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 gives us the first biblical account of man's creation as we know and God said verse 26 let us make man in our image that is a very important word our image and after our likeness let us make man the first reason the foundational reason why men must pray is in the very design of man how God made man to function so the Bible says God made man in his image the image of God is a spiritual quality are we together now and then to function means the way men function two hands two feet to speak to hear and all of that now God gave man a very unique gift at the point of creation that gift is called the wheel everybody say the wheel one more time say the wheel as simple as this sounds it is a very 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 important subject that God gave man in creating man he gave man a unique ability called the wheel the power to make decisions the power to make choices and from the moment God gave man that unique gift that unique ability God designed that ability in man such that as far as he's alive nothing should sustain the power to take away the will of man the only thing that can take the power of man's will is death so the moment a man dies 
he no longer has the ability as much as the bible reveals to make any choice any decision at all upon the earth but for as long as a man is alive he is able to use that gift of the will to make choices but there are implications to giving that gift that gift meant that God would never assume anything about man again from the time man received the gift of the will man had a mandate to always verbalize his intentions verbalize his needs communicate his desires it seemed as if it became illegal for God to superimpose into man's space bringing anything at all without that man making demands of it are we together now I hope you know that with gifts come responsibility if I give you a car while I'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys it comes with responsibilities you need to know how to maintain the car to fuel the car the next time you call me to give you a lift I'm going to ask you how about the car I gave you so God gave man a unique gift but with that gift came a very serious responsibility this is the foundation for prayer if you do not understand this, your prayer life will be acting, you will be tired, you will be weary, you will backslide and repent, backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again. This is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built. So back to my story, God gave man a will and from the moment God gave man a will, can you imagine that God in his might, his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will. That God designed his work with man from the time he gave man a will to be a response system. That means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire, to communicate the need for help. Are we together now? And that God would not assume even though God left something in his dealings with man called his mercy. And there is a reason why he left it there. Because there are times man would have the need, but because of ignorance or oppression, he would not know how to call upon God. At that point, mercy becomes another door that God can still follow and help man. If God did not add mercy, all men may die maybe within a week. Because you will be learning that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. And so there are many times we have received help in our lives that were not directly credited to our asking. We did not know, even know that we needed it. God left his mercy. Are we together? He wrapped up his relationship with man such that even though he gave us a will, he still put his mercy as the platform for his relating with man. If you're following, say amen. amen. Everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, the Bible says, it shall be opened. Why do we pray? The Bible mandates that receiving only responds to asking. Matthew, Mark 11 and verse 24. Mark 11, 24. Jesus again is teaching. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not if ye pray, not you are advised to pray, when ye pray, it says, believe that ye receive them. Are you seeing now? So we now connect asking to prayer and receiving. Is it making sense now? Remember, it is only those who ask that receive. And now Jesus is introducing something between asking and prayer. That the way we ask is in prayer so that we receive. So we can connect this with Matthew 7, 7. That everyone that asketh in prayer is the one who receives. Why pray? Because only those who ask using the gift of the will that God has given them receive. This is very important. When you have your phone, most of us here have phones and um, you have within your phone the ability to call. Call a helpline, call a friend. Am I right on that? Now, if you need, say you have access to my number and I told you you can call me anytime. Did you know that if you fail to call, assuming there's no network problem, there's no recharge card problem, and then you do not call me, 
You see, you can be in danger, but I have bound myself by my word that if you refuse to call, I assume you are safe or I assume whatever trouble you are having is within your power to deal with it. I have taught you that the greatest demonstration of humility is prayerfulness. When you are prayerless, you are proud. It's a declaration of independence that you do not need the strength, the wisdom, the assistance of heaven. Are we learning now? This is very important. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So every time you go to the place of prayer, you are making use of this unique gift that God gave everyone. Your will. You are verbalizing your desire, whether expressing it in love, in fellowship, whether expressing it as uh, receiving answers to petitions and whatever it is. If you fail to exercise that will in prayer, you will live a defeated life, even though you are saved. You would think being born again should exempt you from prayer. There are many believers who are saved but because they do not understand the prayer ministry nor how to utilize this gift of the will the hymn writer says oh what needless pain we bear there are certain pains there are certain battles that are needless if only we know how to use this gift of the will to call for help hallelujah many years ago i used to watch wrestling there's something they call wrestling and uh, there's an aspect of that wrestling called tag team. Remember? Where two people fight two people. One will usually stand outside the ring and hope that his other colleague does a good job. But sometimes things go really bad. Things go really sour. Especially for the other one. They will beat the living daylight out of him and while he's there gasping for breath, the other guy is energized and angry just hoping he can touch him. You see, remember? And he can stretch while the other one draws him back calls his brother but for some he can muzzle energy just enough and sometimes that can be the difference between winning or losing stretch himself almost onto death and touch the other brother and once that other one jumps inside the ring he can even defeat two of the people at once and within minutes victory is declared that's how prayer is that the man may be weak, may not have the power, but there is a system of assistance, but that there are rules of engagement. Even though the other one is mighty, in fact, almighty in this case, but then he stands at the other side waiting, respecting his own word, that if you believe that you do not have the power to run your life, you show that you need him very fast. Still back to my subject of the wrestling. There are some who don't even allow themselves to be beaten. After the first punch, they quietly... That is wisdom. Because eventually they will still beg for help. So why delay after you have been beaten? So the first thing I want you to know is why we pray. Anyone who does not pray is not exercising the gift of the will that God gave him. You are wasting the privilege, the advantage, and the leverage of an invincible God. I hate to use the word ally, but since he's called us co-laborers with him, it's safe to say there is, there is an ally that is indestructible, the creator of the ends of the earth, waiting to coordinate the resources of heaven to your advantage. But the only thing he says, we have not because... We ask not. Not because Satan is powerful. Men like E.M. Bounds will show that there is power that is contained in the place of prayer. If only believers knew the unlimited resources that could come to them from heaven, most believers would take prayer seriously. It would not just be about impressing a man of God or impressing a group of people or showing through social media you are anointed. The, the, the need for prayer is bigger than that, that your life literally depends on it. How could you know that you are sitting before such a leverage and then reject it? You have to be ignorant. Are we together? Again, I give you my card, say, and that card cons, con, you know, has some money in it. And I'm telling you, when you get to the mall, when you get to whatever it is, you have unlimited access. You use the card. All I need you to do is inform me and then you use it. I don't need to give you. It's with you. 
but I'm saying the condition is inform me there is something I will tell the bank when you inform me and it makes the card active immediately. You can roam around the mall in pain. You can roam around while your children cry. Mommy, can't we eat? Daddy, can't we eat? That card looks like there's money in it and you can arrogantly swipe it and it does not work because the condition is to inform me. But if you are childlike enough to inform me, in one moment you can fill your trolley with baskets of provisions. Oh, what needless pain we bear many believers do not know that the real victory of the believer the real victory of the believer is coordinated and released in the place of prayer